Hi, my name is Cassie Franco, and I am going to record a short video for you about a center small group activity that I would do with my students after teaching them data analysis and learning how to collect and interpret data. So this project is called Pet Shop Purchase, and I would have small group differentiated centers. This lesson that I created was for 25 students, so I would have five students per group. Each student, or I'm sorry, each group would receive a bar graph that has labels and title. Then they would also receive another bar graph that has pictures because they will take their bar graph and put it into a pictograph. Each group will also have a spinner with three different pets, a puppy, a kitten, and a mouse. And if you didn't have a paperclip to use as your spinner, you could always use a penny or a dice to throw on there, and that could be how you collect your data. So the first thing I would do in my small group with my with my group, I would have each student spin the dice or the spinner three times. So for time's sake, I'm gonna show you how I would have one student do it and then I'll do the rest. So they would spin the spinner, oh, and it landed on kitten. So I would take my green colored pencil and I would color in my kitten box just like this. I would have that student go two more times. Mouse. I'm gonna use a different color. This way students are able to see the bars differently with different colors. So I'm coloring my mouse just like this. And I'm gonna spin the spinner one more time. And I got kitten again. So, I have green as my kitten, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do one more box for kitten. Now, it would be the next student's turn. They would get to go three times because it's gonna be a total of 15 times. For time's sake, I'm just gonna color in some boxes to get to 15. We'll do two, three, four puppies. We'll do five kittens. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll do five more mice. Now, while working with students, after completing the bar graph, I will make sure they go back and count the boxes to make sure that there are 15 boxes filled in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Excellent. So all of my boxes are colored. Now with there being 15 um, spots on my bar graph, we're gonna have to take turns gluing our pictures onto our pictograph. And this is also a great way for students to understand that pictographs and bar graphs, they are displaying the same data, just with different graphs. So I would have one student say, how many puppies are there? And they would count the puppies, one, two, three, four. They would find four of the little pictures. Now I previously cut these out uh, depending on when I am teaching this in the school year, I may have these already cut out for them, especially with them being first graders. If it's more towards the end of the school year and they've really worked on their cutting skills throughout the year, I may allow the groups to cut them themselves. However, it does take a long time and especially with there's a lot of pictures. So um, it would be my job. Uh, to go ahead and cut these pictures out for them so then they can just glue. And again, the kids can take turns cutting the pictures out, gluing, coloring their graph. So I'm gonna go ahead and like I said, we have four puppies. So I have four 
cute little puppies that I'm gonna go ahead and glue onto my pictograph. And I'll go ahead and show my pictograph as soon as I'm done gluing. What I love about centers is that not only can you differentiate your centers, but it's a great way for students to move around the classroom, engage with their peers. You can really see what students understand the content and who needs a little bit more practice. Now, this is something that I would do on maybe day three or four of already teaching the lesson whole group. So see, I have my four puppies and it matches my four on my bar graph. Alrighty, I have one, two, three, four, five kittens. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue my kittens on. I love using centers um, for math. I love using centers for reading, especially since students are all over the board. And this allows the teacher to be able to really dive deep on those students who either need intervention, they might need enrichment, they might be right where they're at at grade level, um, especially if you have a large class size. Like I said, I prepared this lesson for 25 students. So this would be a harder activity to complete whole group. So I thought this would be a really fun way to show the understanding of picture graph, pictographs and bar graphs in a small group setting. So I have my four dogs or puppies, my six kittens, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six mice. Three, four, five, six. And right now I'm just gluing all my spots down for time's sake. But I would be making sure that the students were counting while they were gluing just to make sure that they have all of their pieces. And there's gonna be some pieces left over and I'll tell them it's okay to throw them in the recycling can. Sometimes we have extra pieces, especially when we have a spinner. We have no idea what's gonna be uh, on our chart. So now that our pictograph is complete, with the small group, I would ask some questions. And this is, again, another way to not only collect the data, but then interpret the data. So for example, I could say, which animal was purchased the most at the pet shop? And I would have a student count the mice, count the kittens, count the puppies. And then they would tell me, oh, mice were bought the most. I can ask a question like, what was bought the least? Well, looking at our pictograph and even looking at our bar graph, we can see that the puppies were purchased the least amount. We can do compare contrast, how many more kittens were bought than puppies. And they could count and say, oh, one more kitten was purchased over puppies. Again, this is just a great way to help you as a teacher understand if your students understand what you're trying to teach them. Um, and then on day five, I would do some type of summative assessment uh, with some type of blank bar graph or blank pictograph, and they'd have to fill it in based off of the, the information or the prompt. But um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun doing it. Um, I have not had the pleasure of doing it with students yet, um, but I hope I get to do it one day. So thanks for watching.